Good evening, everyone. Uh, Mrs. Andriani sends her regrets. She cannot be here tonight, so I will be sitting in for her. Uh, just a few official things first. Pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10-4-10, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by advertising such notice in the Home, <coughs> excuse me, home News Tribune, the Board Office, the Schools, and on Cablevision Channel 118 and Verizon Fios Channel 24, and by filing such notice with the Township Clerk. This meeting was scheduled for Tuesday, April 29th, 2014. The Board will take formal action on agenda items. Mr. Mara. The Oak Ridge Township Board of Education acknowledges that the law of this state establishes that members of the public, including members of the Board, have the right to record public board meetings using audio or video recording devices, provided that the act of recording does not interfere with the business of this public board meeting. Therefore, the Board makes it known that any such recordings to be considered the private recording of the individual and in no manner represents the official record of this Board. The Board, therefore, takes no responsibility for such private recording and completely disavows any future use. Roll call, Mr. Mayor. Borsilli. DePrima. Here. Dunn. Here. Hopman. Here. Mungan. Here. Singh. Here. Solikowski. Here. Weber. Here. Andriani. Quorum exists. If we could all rise for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment, please. We have a moment of silence and memoriam. Move the board acknowledge the passing of Jenny Rosenbaum, retired secretary, and express its deepest sympathy to her family and friends. Thank you. Please be seated. Do I have a volunteer to read the Code of Ethics this month? I think it was supposed to be me, so we're going this way. Rich, would you like to? Read the Code of Ethics, please? Sure. Every board member will confine his or her board action to policy making, planning, and appraisal and help to frame policies and plans only after the board has consulted those who will be affected by them. Thank you. To those who don't know, this is, we added this, I think it was last month. It's just uh, a reminder to everybody and to ourselves why we're all here. Um, Mr. Mara has some administrative changes. Okay, and the, all the board members ha on their agendas, they reflect all the administrative uh, corrections and changes. Uh, anything that was different from the agenda meeting has been either highlighted or in bold. Uh, and member, and uh, copies of the administrative corrections have, are out there for the public. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, we'll move on to approval of minutes. Mr. Mara, roll call. Uh, I'm, I have a, I'm sorry. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? Mr. Singh, or is that Mr. Okay, Mr. Weber and Mr. Singh. Any discussion? Roll call, Mr. Mayor. Borsilli? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes. Mungan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, um, first thing we have is a special presentation. Students from Grissom School and Mr. John Tichio will recognize Ms. Donna Kibler. Mr. Tichio, please. Good evening. My name is John Tichio. Along with the paraprofessionals, Mrs. Zonia Stetson and Mrs. Kimberly Douglas, I teach the full day kindergarten pilot program at Grissom School. We've heard a lot about full-day kindergarten from board members and administrators, from teachers and parents, and from concerned citizens. But tonight, we hear from the most important group, our students. We would like to thank Mr. Sassilatino and the Board of Education for allowing us to be here tonight.
birthday kindergarten has been a lot of fun. We work hard and we play hard too. We like green books and blow in the weed. I mean, we, we like green books and blow in the wood. Come on, girl, two steps down. One, two. Two steps up. One, two. We like to make piles of mowers together. Two steps. One, two. Two steps. One, two. We like to build with blocks and Legos. Two steps. Two steps. We like to explore the sand table. We like to learn about money and the presidents too. Good. Two steps down. One, two. Two steps up. We like to sing song with the piano. Good. Two steps. Two steps. We. Okay, good. We like to go outside and run and play. And run and play. None of these fun times would be possible without the help of Miss Kibler. Two steps down. Two steps up. We came here tonight to give Miss Kibler two gifts. Step down. Two steps up. The first gift is a fair poultry to remind Miss Kibler how much she is helping the students of Old Bridge grow. The second gift is called a song called O to Joy. Thank you so much, boys and girls. That was wonderful. This is what it's all about, folks. <clears throat> Great job, everyone. Okay, thank you, boys and girls. That was wonderful. I think Ms. Kidman.
I'd really like to thank um, Mr. Tikio, Dr. Rico, and the kindergarten children from Grissom School. This was a wonderful honor to be celebrated by these children. But what is more importantly is that we celebrate these children because they have embraced full day kindergarten so wholeheartedly. We need to celebrate their accomplishments because they have embraced full day kindergarten as their arena for learning. They're learning to learn. And they've done a spectacular job. Look what they've accomplished. A beautiful song played on their first instrument that they've ever really played. So parents, hug your children every day, celebrate their accomplishments, and please know that the administration and the Board of Education, you know, has done this for your children, put in full day kindergarten. They have fulfilled the vision of a man who set this on the road to reality many, many years ago, Mr. Patrick Torrey, the former superintendent of schools in Oldbridge. And this was Mr. Torrey's vision way back in the 80s that we have full day kindergarten. And I'm happy to say that long after his passing, it has come to fruition. But I thank the residents, the children, and the board, and the administration for all your support and cooperation. And I celebrate these children because they're just so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, next thing is recognition. I'd like to invite Mr. Cittadino to the podium to uh, proceed with the recognition. It's a tough act to follow, but um, I'm, I'm hoping that I can get a cookie after this as well. <laughs> I received an email uh, about a month ago alerting me about a student at Memorial School, and that student's name is Michael Maraglia, and I was so impressed by this email and its information that I had to go visit him at his school. Is Michael here now? Mark, come on up. You can stand right here. All right. So if you don't know Michael, Michael is a phenomenal student at Memorial School, but he's also an athlete. Michael, what do you play? Football. He plays football. What position do you play? Uh, tight end. Tight end. And he's a... Uh, a quite a football player, but he's not here today to be honored for his prowess on the gridiron. He's here because Michael was selected out of 100, um, uh, one of 35 students in the nation out of 50,000 applicants to be selected as a Pop Warner All-American um, student for the, um, his high GPA. So he's putting it together on the, in the classroom and also on the field. There were students from the region. He was the only student selected from our region, which includes New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, and Maryland. So out of 50,000 applicants, he's one of 35 in the nation, and we're very proud of that accomplishment. Thank you, Michael. Go over to the center stage and um, take a picture. Thank you. You're welcome. At this time, I'm going to ask uh, Deidre Kubicki, Assistant Principal at Jonas Salk School, to join me at the podium. Move the board to commend the following Jonas Salk Middle School students who are crowned Tri-County Champion of the Great Middlesex County Wrestling League.
Good evening. The Jonas Rock family is very proud of these remarkable wrestlers who went above and beyond to receive the honor of being crowned GMC champions. And although we're here tonight to recognize these athletes, I would be remiss if I did not recognize our two outstanding coaches, Mr. Robert Quinn, who is unable to be here this evening, and Mr. Paul Poitras, who joined me at the podium. <laughs> for all of their efforts and dedication to the sport, because the team is only as strong as their leaders. And Mr. Paul Poitras would like to now share some words on each of the athletes. Thank you. This year, the Jonas Salk Middle School Wrestling Team had another successful season. We finished with uh, 12 wins and two losses. We won the GMC League Conference for the third straight year and were crowned division champs again. Um, this year, we had six GMC champions. The first one wrestled 105 pounds for us. Um, he was a GMC champ, very tough wrestler, Sonny Fauci. Next was a heavyweight. Uh, he was an eighth, he's an eighth grader, first year wrestler, was a GMC champion. Um, he was a first year wrestler, and like I said, it's a very hard sport to pick up uh, being a first year wrestler. He had a huge win to lock our division up, Jonathan Lopez. Next, this boy is a seventh grader. Um, it's his second year wrestling. He wrestled 126 pounds for us. He was a GMC champ, a Middlesex County champ, and finished second in the Tri-County Championships. Lost a very tough match, Justin Gonzalez. This next boy wrestled uh, 170 pounds for us. He finishes as a two-time GMC champion a two-time Middlesex County champion, and finished second in the Tri-Counties. Good luck in high school, Tyler Hogan. This next wrestler wrestled 185 pounds for us. He finished the season undefeated. He's a two-time GMC champion. Uh, he's a Middlesex County champion and won the Tri-County Championship this year, Bartek Ribka. His next boy wrestled 90 pounds for us. Uh, he finished his Jonas Salk wrestling career with 50 wins and four losses. Uh, he was a Salk MVP this year. He was a three-time GMC champion, a three-time Middlesex County champion, and this year won the Tri-County Championships. Michael Boddy. Yeah. Congratulations to all the GMC County champions. The next item on the recognition comes from Carl Sandberg Middle School. If I can have Principal Joseph Maranzoli please go to the podium. Special thanks to the following donors, Disney, Carol Worley, Betty Kohring, Kristen and Joseph Stahl, Joyce Pearl, Deborah Carbone, and Carol Hush for funding the Donors Choice Project, Bring the Greenhouse to Life, submitted by Susan Stahl for $711. Funding was used to purchase a heater, hose hanger, 1,000 jiffy pellets, 
10 planting trays, and one red cedar planter for the Carl Sandburg Middle School greenhouse restoration. Mr. Maranzoli. Thank you, Mr. Cittadino. Uh, just to give everyone a little bit of a background, um, Carl Sandburg Middle School has a wonderful facility, um, and in that facility, there is a greenhouse. And the greenhouse, for a long time, had been uh, a little bit used and dilapidated. So our last year's Teacher of the Year, Mrs. Stahl, or Ms. Stahl, uh, wanted to work on that greenhouse uh, as a uh, memorial to Mrs. Kornishevitz, uh, who was our speech teacher who had passed. And through her efforts, um, she put together uh, several different fundraising opportunities. One was through the Donors Choose Project, uh, which is an online uh, way of trying to get donors. Um, and she was able to successfully uh, have all of these donors um, donate to make a beautiful, very, very functional and uh, wonderful greenhouse that is now a place of peace and remembrance. So to her and every donor who helped with that cause, uh, we wanted to say thank you. So thank you very much. Okay, one more recognition, everyone. Um, if you don't know, I am the chairman of the Food Service Committee, and I'd like to call uh, Ms. Michelle Feliciano up to the podium. She's our director of food services. Recently, we, uh, <laughs> we recently had a, a future chefs competition, and I think Michelle is just going to say a few words about it and bring our future chefs up. These are the names if you need them. Let me read the names. I kind of coaxed Sorry. Michelle to do this. <laughs> this was the last minute, so I'm just flying off the cuffs here. Um, real quick, um, what our Future Chefs competition is, um, this actually starts back in December. I send out blank recipe cards to all the elementary schools, to the fourth and fifth grade students. They, in turn, submit a recipe. This year it was for a healthy sandwich. One winner was chosen from each elementary school to compete. Um, they competed on Saturday, March 22nd. They were placed on a team with one of my employees and a high school culinary student. So the high school culinary student and one of my employees helped the student create the recipe that day. They made 75 to 100 tasting portions. We had judges, um, so we had 11 teams, um, and we chose a winner from that day. Um, our winner is here, Madison Pastor from Cooper Elementary School. You're going to do the certificate after. Come on up, Madison. Um, in addition, not only did Madison win um, on that day, um, Sodexo actually does this event all across the country. We had over 286 school districts nationwide. Um, so once the winners are chosen for all those school districts, um, the regional finalists are chosen. So Madison was also chosen as a top 35 in the country. So today I actually went to her school and we presented her with a Kindle Fire and a $100 Amazon gift card for becoming a regional. And just a quick note, I mean, I, this is a long, probably, I work on this all year, but I could not have done this without the help of my employees. Everyone pitches in that day. It's all volunteer. Uh, you know, they come in real early in the morning. They work till late in the afternoon. Um, same thing with the high school culinary students. They help us as well. Um, so I just want to say a big thanks to them. I'm not sure who is here, um, so I'm going to read, do you want me to read the names? Yeah. I'm going to read the names. If you are here, come on up. Um, I'll start with the student, the elementary school students first. Um, Cameron Gray from McDivitt. Matthew Brennan from Carpenter. Aaron Picard from Shira. Adam Araki from Southwood. Maiko Fisco from Voorhees. Nice Julia Najron from Cheesequake. 
Zena Safar from Madison Park. <laughs> Emily Labor from Memorial. <laughs> Emily was actually our winner last year. Ben Strew from Shepherd and Bradford Wallace from Miller. I uh, know the um, CXO employees that are here, Tina Antonelli, Ann Traverso, and Sharon Duman, and our chef manager, Judy, come up. Okay, I just want to thank the um, high school culinary students also who participated. Alexandra Dennis, Gloria Winder, Dominique Bianco, Katie Yip, Dale G De Jesus, Megan Grassa, John McCarthy, Caitlin Nemeth, Mark Martinez, Nancy Calamanis, and Tony Dominici. That's Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle, and all the students involved. Uh, when I was in fifth grade, I really didn't care about healthy foods. I commend you guys. Great job, everybody. Okay, we're going to move on with recognition so everyone knows after we complete recognition, we'll have a little break for everyone to leave if you don't want to leave in the middle of recognition. So all of our students have an audience. That would be greatly appreciated. If I could have Ms. Fazio come to the podium. Move the Board of Education to recognize Nathaniel Feldman, Old Bridge High School senior, for earning his rank of Eagle Scout with the St. Am St. Ambrose Troop 129. In June of 2013, Nathaniel completed his Eagle Scout project by installing over 200 feet of split rail fencing along the field behind St. Ambrose Church and School. This installation provided not only beautification to the area, but protection for the children who used, um, the, who used the playground and the fields. Nathaniel also built and installed two benches for the spectators to sit and watch the field events. Let me tell you a little bit something about Nathaniel. Academically, he currently holds a 5.2 GPA. He's ranked 11 out of 739. He is a member of the National Honor Society, the Math Honor Society, the Science Honor Society, History Honor Society, Triam Honor Society, and reminded me today to include the French Honor Society, right, Nathaniel? <laughs> his accomplishments do not end with his impressive academic record or his community service. He also plays several instruments and has been a member of the Old Bridge Marching Knights for the past four years. I am also proud to announce 
that Nathaniel will be attending Boston University in the fall to study uh, mechanical engineering. Congratulations. He was very happy about that accomplishment. May I have Mr. and Mrs. Feldman up here for a second because I know that Nathaniel wants to share this with his parents. So Nathaniel, you are the epitome of a Boy Scout. You are trustworthy, you are loyal, you are helpful, you are friendly, you are courteous, you are kind, and you are cheerful, always cheerful. On behalf of the Oldbridge High School Administration, the Board of Education, we congratulate you on your Eagle Scout. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you very much. This is for your You're very welcome. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our last recognition. Last but not least, move the board to recognize Cameron Gray, a fifth grader at McDivitt Elementary School for receiving the Triple A Outstanding Safety Patroller Award on April 24th down in Bordentown, New Jersey. It was a ter terrific ceremony. I got to have a great lunch with her family um, who were equally as terrific and a wonderful uh, older brother that you have who attends Carl Sandburg Middle School. Good evening, parents, students, Board of Education members, Mr. Cittadino, Mrs. Kibler, Dr. Hoker, and the Old Bridge community. My name is Laurie Coletti, and I would like to thank you for the opportunity to recognize an outstanding student at McDivitt School, Ms. Cameron Gray. Cameron is a member of the McDivitt School Safety Patrol and was recently recognized as one of 12 AAA Outstanding School Safety Patrollers at a luncheon in Bordentown, New Jersey. She was accompanied by her parents, Superintendent Mr. Cittadino, Dear Officer Frank Cachera, and her classroom teacher, Ms. Donovan. As McDivitt's principal, I am very aware of the treasure that is Cameron. She is wonderful to work with and totally trustworthy. Cameron is refreshing and delightful. We are lucky to have her to help with kindergarten arrival and dismissal. Cameron is academically strong. She is on honor roll and participates in the challenge program. Cameron is involved with our instrumental music program, playing percussion in the fifth grade band. Cameron has an impressive resume of civic responsibility. She is an active member of the McDivitt's Kiwanis Kids Club, <clears throat> the treasurer of McDivitt's Student Council, McDivitt's DARE ambassador to the Old Bridge Municipal Alliance, a peer mediator, and is McDivitt's finalist in the Old Bridge Future Chefs competition. Cameron participates in all school activities, intramurals, and out of school service learning events such as park cleanups, senior citizen bingo, YMCA fundraiser, cancer run for the kids, and the food bank support. Cameron is an amazing fifth grader who continues to sparkle while her heart shines. It is a pleasure to recognize Cameron for her outstanding safety patrol efforts. Congratulations. This time. Signed by the um, Board of Education and the Superintendent. Why don't you go over there and let Miss Lucci take your picture? I was telling Miss Coletti when we met the other day that in in Old Bridge we don't bestow upon the safety patrollers a rank. So some of the students who were there that day, and there was only about 15 from the entire state being honored, were called up as lieutenant, captain of the safety patrol. And I leaned over to Cameron and I said, well, what is your rank in the safety patrol? And she said, in Old Bridge, we don't have ranks. So I took a spoon and I tapped her on each shoulder. Cameron, why don't you tell everybody what your new rank is on the safety patrol? Okay, check it out. Chief. She, Cameron. Cameron is the chief of our safety patrol. Thank you, Captain. Okay, thank you, everyone. Um, can I have a motion to move recognition? Mongan will move. And a uh, second, please? Dunn will second recognition. Mr. Mara? DePrima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes, congratulations to all. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Solkowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. Borsilli? Yes. Motions pass. 
Um, I don't see our student representative, Chris Simone, anywhere. I will tell you why you don't see Chris Simone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because Christopher Simone, I'm just trying to get the location. Chris is uh, re in the GMCs uh, right now for the relays for track and field in South Brunswick, and he's competing representing the school district, and that is why he could not be here. Uh, but he asked me to pass along some tidbits of information about uh, some of the activities going on at Oldbridge High School and in the community. He's very proud to re report that Oldbridge High School uh, took in 80 pints of blood in their recent blood drive on April 22nd. I'm going to tie this into my superintendent's report. And he wanted to let everyone know, as I want to let everyone know, on May 1st, we'll be having a lacrosse game. Oldbridge High School lacrosse will be competing against uh, Scotch Plains Fanwood Raiders at 7 p.m at Lombardi Field, and all proceeds, including the sales of these excellent t-shirts, will go to uh, assist Stephen Bartlett, a sophomore at Oldbridge High School, who was battling stage four Hodgkin lymphoma, and I'm very proud of the entire community as they're rallying together to support him at this time, and him, his, him and his family. So it would be great to have as many people there as possible. I do know that May 1st is also the Arts Festival, and that was scheduled prior to this. Um, but there's a special reason why we chose this game against uh, Scotch Plains Fanwood. The goalie from that team is also a cancer survivor who just came back this season in his fight for cancer. So we thought it'd be a great inspiration for Steven um, to have these two teams play. The, and that will be rain or shine, that, that game. May 1st at 6 p.m. is the Arts Festival at Oldbridge High School. That'll kick off in the gymnasium. And then May 4th will be the SEPTA Field Day for uh, any of our special needs families. It's a great day to get out there and partake in activities on Lombardi Field. And um, that'll take place from 1 to 4 on Sunday, May the 4th. And never too early, June 21st is the Relay for Life in Old Bridge. That'll take place at Lombardi Field at 6 p.m. Any questions about those items? <coughs> Next, we're going to move into progress towards goals, and I will invite to the podium uh, Ms. Anahita Keeler, and she's going to give us progress towards our Mandarin uh, program in their fifth grade. While she's setting up, anyone who wanted to leave before but couldn't uh, during recognition, you're welcome to do so, or you can stay behind. Thank you. Jia Yu Wei Yuan Hui, Da Jia Hao, Wo Jia Demira, Wo Jin Nian Shi Che Shui, Shi Lao Chao Gou Zhong, Si Nian Ji Shui Shong, Yi Si Dao Ye, Do Zhong Yog Jing, Zao Wei Yi Zhe Ge Zing, Xin Si Nao Chan, Wo Kai Shi, Shui Qi Pu Tang Hua, Hen Dao Ren Wen Wo, Ni Tian Chin Zi Tian So Chiu, Zhi Li Zhong Guo, Tian Wo Li Ju Zui, Wei Men Chen Huo, Yo Shui Pu Tang Huo, Wo Sha Shui Qi Tian, Shi Yin Wen Shi, Wu Yi Ren Zhang Pu Tang Hua, Shi Jiang Ying Yu, Ren Shu Su Bei, Yo Yu Gao Shou Lou, Wo Na Da Shi Da Shi, Zi Kuai Le, Si Da Sao Shao, Zai Duan Duan, Jin Yen Nei, Dong Wo Zuen Bei, Tao Shim Guang Zuo, Wo Bu Jin Si Tiong, Wo Tang Shu Bi, Ye Da Ji Wei, Lao Chao Gong Zu Tang Shui Jing Zuen, Wo Hai Tang Shi Yu, Shi Jie, Shi Zhong, Zong Sui Ren, Wo Men Mei Tian, Zuo Chen Qing Li, Xiao Shi, Ta Shi Zao Hao, Hao Jing Da Gu Shun, Kai Shi, the child of Ling Di Lang, Shi Lang Yi Nian Ji, Kai Shi Zhou Shui Ying, Yo De Jing Jung Huan Ban. Jie Shui Hai, Zai Zhong Do Ho Tuang, Zhou Zi Gu, Zhong San Nian, Ying De Shua Shi, Cheng Wei Xuan Yi, Ji Sheng Ju, Wo Bu Nian, Zhong Dong Shi Zhou Liu Wo, Wo Bi Shu Jue Xiong, Zi Wo Qian Da Shi Jie. Wo Ji Dao, Xiao Shi Zhong Wen Hua, 
Bang Wu Chong Wei Yi Ji Ge, Gun Hua De Hui Shun, Duen Lian Wo De Dan Yo, Ding Ren Wo Li Lian Gong Ju Shu Jo, Wo Yi Jing Juan Bei Hao Jing Zhao Dong, Dang Wo Jo Yu Jo De Lao Rider, Dao Shi Shu, Wo De Shuan Ji Shi, Shui Shi Pu Tang Hua. Jin Hua Ru Go Rin Di Wa, Wo Da Zhong Wen Ni, Neng Li Lian, Shao Sheng Ke, Yin Xia Reng Shou Zhuan Zhong, Chong Ji Nan Ji, Kao Shi, Shui Zhong Wen Shu Xiong, Yo Yan Mo, Wo Men Zou Bu Da Da Na, Zhan Shi Nian Shi, Zhan Hi Ge, Wo Xiao De Hui. Xie Xie. Thank you, Damira. And I apologize. For some reason, the very last slide was supposed to say, if you are impressed with what Damira can do with just four years of Mandarin, imagine what she could have done if she had learned it in the first grade. And I truly appreciate it, Damira, despite your fractured leg, ankle, which just happened over the weekend, and all the other stressors of applying to Ryder, um, being accepted into the community house that she just found out she was accepted into, Thank you. Um, she made it a point to come out here and, and share her beautiful talents with us. Let's hear it for Demira once again, please. Um, uh, yes, in just a minute. I was trying to make the point that Demira has been studying Chinese for only four years with a variety of teachers who have come and left our high school. And um, this year, thanks to the board's foresight, we were able to implement a fifth grade Chinese program that has impacted over 700 plus students district wide. The funding came to us through an application that I applied for from College Board and the Hanban Agency in China. And our students were able to learn Mandarin Chinese starting in the fifth grade. They learned a bit of culture, they learned a bit of language, and I would like to share a short video with you. Thank you to Ms. Walsh, Mr. Kajewski, um, and his fantastic students who were able to go down and videotape a little something uh, for us and share this with you. I just wanted to let you know that the reason Chinese is so important, and just as music is, it's a language that engages an alternate part of, part of the brain um, than the regular traditional Western languages. And by doing so, it expands those thought processes that we can then use to improve, improve overall learning. Um, more importantly, as I had mentioned, in our World Language Honor Society last Thursday, employers are not just looking for people to speak in a different language. They're truly looking for people to embrace different cultures. And that is what Mr. Lee has done for our 12 elementary schools. Um, and I'm hoping you get a little bit of a taste of that through this video. So again, I appreciate it. Um, and as a final thought, um, we have been, Oldbridge has been selected as the first, one of the first schools to have been selected to participate in the same guest teacher trainee program again next year. And as I am currently working out the logistics of housing and transportation once again, um, I'm very pleased and happy to say that the College Board is once again offering us a guest teacher trainee for absolutely free to come and teach once again to all our fifth graders. I find this to be a phenomenal resource and a phenomenal program that we must continue in our school district. So once again, I thank you.
um, one week, one week, one time. Every day, different school. My class is half an hour. So far, we have learned introduce yourself, and I'm American, I'm Chinese, and the numbers, and colors, and something about Chinese New Year. I not only teach the kids the Chinese language, but also I teach something about Chinese culture, buy some video, and do something. I'm a paper cutter, Chinese paper cutter. I love paper cutting from my grandma since I was six years old. So I also teach the kids do some paper cutting artwork. Um, in the future, maybe the next topic is family. Yeah, maybe I'll teach other kids to keep the family members. And my family project is we're going to make a family book. Yeah, the kids are very nice. The kids enjoy it. You know, teaching here and teaching China is different. Here, I think the big difference is you should make class very funny. Yeah. And make more communication with the kids. But in China, it's different. In China, sometimes just the teacher speak, speak, speak. And the kids just listen, listen, and no talking. That's big difference. You know, I think here is better. I like the teaching here. Because kids, have questions and they need to know something, they can ask the teacher. And this is very good way of communication. But in China, maybe we will look at this. Um, I think for not just for American kids. You know, in China, the young kids in elementary school, they study, they learn English and learn something about English culture. I think that's very important to everyone to learn something, learn another language, and learn some different culture. Yeah. Well, the children have really loved having Mr. Lee come in. He comes in every week and he always has fun, hands-on activities for them to do, which they really thoroughly enjoy. I think that they enjoy it because the Chinese language is a little bit more challenging. They not only have to learn how to speak the language, how to understand it, but they're also learning the symbols. And they're doing a great job, so it's been a very positive experience. The children absolutely love it. They took to it i was surprised that they took to it right away and that they have such good accents and that they love mr lee yes. that it is a very good introduction to a different culture and a, a very difficult language and that it can help them in, fu in the future and that if, they, if it could be continued, it would be a real plus for them. Mr. Mayor, any correspondence? Uh, no correspondence. Okay, uh, moving on, special committee reports. I guess we'll start, uh, Mr. Basili, anything? No, I don't have anything at this time. Mr. Dunn? No. Mrs. Hartman? No, nothing at this time. Um, okay, I had, uh, real quick, I did have a food service athletic complex events meeting on March 26th. Um, the main thing, there was representatives there from the PTSA, the high school PTSA, um, PTA President's Council, and the community. Uh, the main thing that, that was, uh, I, I think, taken away from the meeting was PTSA has to have a little better community, no, well, the PTSA needs a, a better communication to them regarding schedules and spring sports. Um, is home field Lombardi or Geik? Uh, it, it's all things that are... Um, relaying to the, the, the operation of the, of the concession stand, I guess. Uh, they are being worked on, and that's pretty much really it on that. Um, I did attend the curriculum and technology meeting in place of Mrs. Andriani. Uh, one thing that was very impressive, I don't know if anybody knows what the Garage Band is. It's, it's, an, it's an app on the iPad where our music students are writing their own songs, and I, I thought it was just amazing. 
uh, we saw a, a demonstration of robots. Apparently, robotics is, is another big thing in this school that is uh, taking place, and that was, also was very impressive. And that's pretty much it on my end. Uh, going down, uh, Mr. Sulikowski? Yes, I was at the same meeting with you, and uh, we discussed curriculum end of it, and I'll go over it a little bit. Okay, uh, th that was the first meeting that was uh, videotaped uh, officially by the board, or Mr. Marrow, our board secretary, set it up. We have a video camera in the, uh, the chamber right now, and I have a copy of it. And the whole setup is that little by little, all these meetings would be videotaped, and a copy would be uh, distributed to all the board members and the administration, and hopefully a copy at the public library so the public can view these to see what's really going on, because not everybody could attend all these meetings. So I do have the master copy here, and I will ask uh, our TV studio to make copies up for all these people on the board. They're very, very cheap. I guess blanks cost only 75 or 80 cents. Also, we discussed uh, robotics, robotic STEM education, which took most of the meeting. And right now, we currently have a robotics pilot program at the senior level. Uh, and a fourth marking period in the astronomy section. And we had a youngster, his name was, uh, I have it written down over here. Okay, Peter Fotis, he came in, I want to thank him again on TV. He came in and demonstrated uh, on the projects that he worked. What he did is he came in with three different kits. We have about four or, four or five different kits at the science classes, right? Tech, you know, robotics basically is a cross between uh, technology and the industrial arts or engineering. Uh, the teacher that came in with him, uh, he also uh, came up with a proposal that he would like to see a program established at the high school level within the next couple of years from freshmen through seniors. You know, after all, if you go out to industry today and look at the way things are made, uh, people very rarely do anything by hand anymore. If you have a car built, you know, the robot puts the, uh, the, the, the hubcaps on, he puts the, the whole car together. We basically sit there and control the computer to do, do all these things. As time goes on, we're going to get more and more into this area, and I feel that we should slightly change our educational structure to compete or go along with what's going on in the real world, especially in technology and uh, the communication of the industry itself. Uh, Lego is willing to come in and train our uh, staff uh, with these particular programs. Right now, we also have uh, at the kindergarten level and at the elementary level where kids are actually working with Legos, building blocks and building things. And it gives them an insight of how things are put together. So we have to start at the bottom level and work up. Like I said before, I like to see education change a little bit, going to more into technology and engineering because this is where the rest of the world is going. We also spoke about uh, Book Buddy Program. This is a program that we are working in conjunction with the public library. And what happens is we run it four days a week where we have volunteers from grade six through 12. They go into the library, I believe I have the dates written down over here. Uh, Tuesday from 7 to 8, Wednesday from 4.30 to 5.30, Friday from 3.30 to 4.30, and on Saturday from 10 to 11. And what we do is uh, youngsters from the elementary school that would like a little help in reading, uh, these people or these kids from the upper level will help these kids and give them a better foundation to work with. Uh, we also had science night at the high school. We had 16 volunteer teachers. And uh, it worked out very well. We had a large uh, attendance from the high school. Next year, I think Dr. Agoria would like to expand it and invite the elementary school students and possibly bring in some technology projects. Uh, we also discussed, I have it all this written down, can't remember it all. Okay, uh, elementary and secondary school counseling grant uh, for 2014. Uh, we received a grant for $1.2 million that will be dispersed over a three-year period uh, to help our guidance counselors at the elementary level. We also discussed the park testing, which we already, I believe, completed. I believe the state is giving us several weeks to do this, and it was a pilot program. We're not, they're not going to count the test, but they're going to see how it goes. 
possibly our uh, director of, not our director, but our superintendent in charge of curriculum can explain a little about this because she knows more about it than I do. The park. Well, yours. Park, you want me yes, to talk about yes. park? Okay. <laughs> park is a new testing program that um, is being implemented next year. Um, Elbridge was very fortunate to be able to participate in the field testing uh, a week or so ago, and it went well. And it was very fortunate that we had this opportunity because we got to experience firsthand um, how it operates, what some of the glitches are, and how best we can um, move forward with this in preparing our students for the testing as we, as it becomes um, the way to assess our students next year. I just want to clarify one point. Mr. Sulikowski, we applied for that $1.2 million grant. We have not been awarded that grant. The deadline was uh, yesterday that we submitted the grant, and it was verified that they received our application. I apologize for my, I guess, mis 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 miswording it. Uh, accepted. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Uh, also, uh, we had advanced placement courses discussed, number of enrolled students uh, taking a standardized testing. Other districts pay for their students to take the AP test. And uh, according to what I read over here, the district uh, is paying very little. Our enrollment numbers in our AP classes are high and always increase uh, with leads uh, each year. I want to thank everybody for listening to me, and that's my report. Thank you, Mr. Sulikowski. Ms. Mongan, anything? Well, the Negotiations Committee um, has had two meetings and will be having a third meeting in May with the Old Bridge Administrators Association to negotiate a su successor agreement to their contract, which expires in June. Thank you, Mr. Singh. I don't have anything at this time. And Mr. Yeah. Weber. No. Okay, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Roman numeral number 14, facilities use, move the board acknowledge the schedule of facilities usage request. And uh, on to hearing of the residents, agenda items only. Hi, I'm Relly Leibowitz, former teacher for 46 years in Old Bridge. I notice on the list of teachers who are out for um, health reasons and have been granted or will be granted leaves. I just want to say one thing about uh, Helen Kenny. She is a teacher at McDivitt School. I have never been on a committee that she wasn't on, and I know she was on many more committees that I could, than I could be. She was a mover and a shaker. She has the pulse of this township down cold, and she has given so much to, to make divot and to other schools that she's been in. Please keep her in your prayers and in your thoughts, and hope that she can come back and resume her job at McDivitt School. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Leibowitz. Anybody else? Here, um, agenda items only? No? Okay, we'll close that portion. On to policy. Nothing there. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, yes, a policy, there's nothing there, but I will have a policy meeting. I got an alert from uh, Mr. Maris, Secretary, that a lot of the policies have to be re redone, either revised or mandated by this board, and I will be calling a meeting as soon as I can find out what's the, what dates are available. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sulikowski. Um, I have a motion to move athletics, please. Items one to two. Mongan will move it. And a second? I'll second it. Uh, any discussion? Mr. Mara, please. Dunn. Yes. Hopman. Yes. Mongan. Yes. Singh. Yes. Sulikowski. Yes. Weber. Yes. Borsilli. Yes. DePrima. Yes. Motions pass. Okay, curriculum. Items 1 to 11. Can I have a motion to move, please? Dunn will make a motion. Items 1 through 11. Second. 
Okay, I would like to separate number three for discussion, please. Okay, any other separations? Okay. Uh, and, and separation, discussion and separation for voting purposes. What goes first? Do we vote on the others first or? Minus three. Okay, is there any discussion on numbers one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven? Can I have a roll call on those, please? Hopman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. Porcelli? Yes. Deprima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Motions passed for 1, 2, and 4 through 11. Okay, Mr. Sulikowski, discussion on number 3? Okay. Okay, being the chair of the curriculum committee, I was involved with curriculum getting to understand a little more each day of what's being taught in our school system. I'm very familiar with the high school programs because I spent 36 years working with them. The elementary I picked up quite well because I had one of my grandchildren go through the system and I got involved with that and I, I'm sort of, we're, we have an excellent elementary school system over here. I think we're doing a phenomenal job. I give the teachers a lot of credit, the administrators. Our kids are doing very well. We're putting a great foundation together for these kids to survive later on in life. Uh, getting to the middle school. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, possibly next year, uh, the curriculum meeting, all of these things that we're voting on tonight would be discussed in segments little by little and the uh, superintendent in charge of curriculum will say we're going to be placing these items on the agenda. And what are your recommendations? That didn't happen this year. So what I would like to do is at the middle school level, I would like to see more basic skill programs for these kids that are struggling going through the system. English as a second language, I mean, our parents are calling me up and saying that their children are having difficulties composing paragraphs and writing. English, language, arts, I would like to see more input into that area. Mathematics, a must. I mean, the state is going to come down on us and they're going to say, hey, we have to get more time into mathematics classes. They're in there right now for 42 or 43 minutes. And the sciences. After all, the entire universe revolves around these areas that I just spoke. I would like to separate the middle school curriculum, have a meeting with Ms. Kibler and the committee, before I vote on this, because I can't vote on it the way it sits right now. There are too many dark areas in this particular middle school curriculum. I won't vote on it. So I have to separate this entire section until the next meeting. Discuss it with Ms. Kibler, the curriculum committee, make a copy of the video, give it to the rest of the board members before I vote on this. Again, I would like to see more mathematics at the middle school level. Thank you. In other words, I want to table this. Okay, um, can I have a motion to table number three? Um, if no motion is made, it's not tabled. I, can I make the motion? You can make the motion. I make the motion to table it. Is there a second? Is there a second? That's not the entire curriculum for the school system. That's only the middle school portion where I can discuss this with the curriculum middle, uh, committee properly because as far as I'm, like I said, I'm concerned is there's a lot of great areas in here that were not discussed. Okay, so After all, the children of Overage, they're at stake over here. So Sulikowski made a motion to separate, uh, to table, I'm sorry, is there a second? Um, having no second. Motion. Okay, the motion fails, uh, so now we vote on number three, correct? Uh, Mr. Mara? Hopman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Definitely not. Weber? Yes. Borsilli? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Uh, item number three passes. Okay, thank you. Moving on to finance, um, items one through, <coughs> sorry, 15. one through 15. Do I have a motion to move finance? Mongan will move. Ms. Mongan, second. 
Seeing and second. Seeing. Any discussion? Yes, I'd like to have a little discussion. Just on one of the bill list items. I'm sorry? I just want to bring the attention to one item. Um, it's on page, well, it's, a, it's a second bill list, so it's page two of 16. Um, that's in there. All phase general contractors, $4,818 for baseball field fence. Um, my only question, and I had asked a number of questions to administration. They had answered most of them. Um, but my concern is that this had not been discussed with the board prior to it. Um, this, from my understanding, what this is, is that we needed to put a fence around the on-deck circle. Um, my understanding is that it was a, a flaw in the design and that the on-deck circle was put on the outside of the dugout fence. By law, you cannot have in any youth organization uh, uh, children outside that fence while a batter is up. <laughs> so my understanding is that there was options, right? The first option is what, probably what we've been doing, and I'm not certain what we've been doing, but I'm assuming is that we don't have batters on deck. They wait in the dugout for their turn at bat, right? And then they get up at bat, okay? Um, this is a brand new field. We spent a significant amount of money on it. Um, whether you love it or, or you disagree with it, it's a beautiful complex, and I think we should be proud of what we have. Um, but I think that we, we, should, we should stop there. To me, this is an upgrade to the facility. I think at this point, we, we continue on the way that we've been continuing on. Um, I sit through many committee meetings, such as curriculum, and teachers, uh, supervisors, administrators, they come to us with requests, sometimes for textbooks, because our textbooks are out of date. And we, we question it, and we, we scrutinize it, and we prioritize. Um, but yet, when we're looking to make an upgrade to a brand new baseball facility, we're not, we don't question it. So my concern is, why wasn't the board approached that this was going to take place, and that we were going to invest more money into this field, when I think that we should be investing in textbooks? Uh, can anybody answer, Mr. Basile? I would recommend that if the board, uh, in consultation with Mr. Harden, wants to go after the designer of the field, that would be the way to go to recoup these fees. To sit back and say, well, let's keep on doing what we're going to have. If we find that it's a safety issue, I assure you the bill for any litigation for a child getting hurt with something that we identify as a safety issue would be much more than $4,000 for a uh, uh, run offense. Well, I, I understand I'm, the I, argument. I was, okay. I, I'm sorry. I understand the argument of the safety issue. But the safety issue is only when a coach is careless and allows a batter to go outside of that fence, which could also happen with an on-deck circle, OK? Just because it's a fenced-in area, the, the batter can take the bat and say he's going to warm up behind the batter's box, OK? So what the rules would state is that that player does not leave the dugout until it's his turn to bat. You know, we've spoken at, you know, uh, earlier on in the year about setting goals where we want to make sure that every decision that we make benefits every child in this district. Um, but, you know, this is, this is benefiting less than 1% of our students. It's not benefiting our softball players or our soccer players or our lacrosse players. It's goal number five. Right. Goal number five is student safety. Uh, I have a question for Mr. Mayor. Is this, this fence has been installed? All right, so at this point, uh, the contractor wasn't part of any of that discrepancy, so I would vote uh, to approve it. However, I would strongly encourage us to recover the money. Um, I have a question. Uh, the field has been in operation over a year. This safety concern just arose. I mean, the designs had to be approved. Uh, they were approved, and the field was built while I was um, the, the business administrator. And why wasn't this concern addressed before the turf was put down and while it was in the d design phase. I mean, I'm sure before anything work was done, the um, district signed off on the plan. So, you know, that's, that's my question. And if it is a safety, if, if $4,000 pays for a little more safety, then I, then I have no problem with it. It's, it's not a major renovation, but, um, I just don't understand why it's coming up now so much later when they had a whole season of baseball and it didn't come up last year. 
Can, can I just make one more comment? I'm sorry, to, to your comment, Mr. Cittadino, goal number five is safety. I completely agree with that, okay? We've been playing on this field with it the way that it is, and I assume that we've been taking safety into consideration and ensuring that those players do not leave the dugout. So I believe one of the options would be to remove the on-deck circle and just have a field with no on-deck circle. You understand what I'm saying? So then you don't have that option of that student walking out there and walking into a, an, an area that is not safe. So it's not so much where I'm arguing whether or not this should have been done. I'm more concerned with why wasn't this brought to the board's attention before we made the decision to move forward when I believe that there were other options. Okay. Part of the reason is that this was brought to our attention, again, it's not that excuse my first year as superintendent, I wasn't in the ability to sign off on anything for that field when that field was built. So it wasn't in my position to approve or not approve that field. I couldn't tell you, I don't think there's a person at, this, at the dais who was in position to approve that field. It was brought to our attention by the director of athletics and by the baseball coach and it was brought to his attention by other f baseball coaches who checked with the NJSIAA there has to be an on-deck circle for high school baseball. You can't have students not warm up and get ready to swing and then just go out, ask them to go out and swing at a pitch that they haven't been, had the top opportunity to warm up for. And you're not going to delay a game and give, a, give us someone three minutes to take some practice swings before going up to, the, to hit the ball. Just the way it is. That's in the regulations. So I could have ignored the situation and said, let's hope for the best and go and litigate this and hope that I can get the the contract to come back and put in a $4,000 piece of fence, or we pay for the $4,000 piece, piece of fence to ensure the safety of our students, and not only our students, but any students who use, anyone who uses the field, and then go after the $4,000. Um, I, I checked the NJSIA uh, rules, and it states that a, a batter can be in a on-deck circle if it is a secured fenced in area, or that they can wait inside the dugout. That's, that's as far as it states. So it does not state that there, to me, the way I read it, does not state that there needs to be an on-deck circle, but there has to be a, an area where the player can wait for his turn at bat. Now, if it's inside the dugout, the issue is there, they cannot pick up a bat. Correct, that's the same from information I have. There has to be a place for this player to warm up, and it has to be in a secure area. Mr. Vice President, I think what we should do, since it's already been installed, it's a design floor of the field. If it's required by law, then we have to go back to the engineer of record and say, hey, you know what, this was a deficiency within your plans. You gave us defective plans. Now we want recourse. We want reimbursement for this because it should have been initially developed, part of the grand scheme or the grand plan, and it wasn't done. So I think we have some recourse as a Board of Education to go to our engineer of record and say, hey, look, this is a floor that was designed into the facility that you were hired to do. Now we want some sort of uh, you know, uh, some sort of reimbursement, or we take it from other fees that he has going on right now in the district. So we do have recourse. I believe defense has been installed already. Safety is paramount. And at this point, I think we go after the engineer record and say, hey, look, this is something you should have been aware of. There have been other issues with the field, which he's been aware of as well, which we've been working with him. So at this point, I think we have no other recourse but to take from him and get an explanation. I agree with Mr. Dunn. I'm going to just ask counsel if we proceed with that and then follow up. Is that how? Exactly. So we will still go with the vote. Yes. And then follow up and see if there's any recourse That's for correct. us in we'll, recapturing we'll the funds. We'll pursue it with the contract okay. afterwards. Is everybody okay with that? I, I'm okay with that. Again, it, it, it's done and what's done is done. Okay. My argument is that if we're going to be making any upgrades, and I see this as an upgrade to the facility, right, I believe that there were other options, and I think that that should have been discussed with the board beforehand. I fully I, I believe that there's other ways that we could have spent that money. I fully That's agree with that part, but I, I, I'm, my personal opinion is it wasn't an upgrade to beautify the field or anything like that. It was an upgrade to ensure the safety of our student athletes. I, I, I still, you know, can I ask one question, Mr. City Neal? Um, what have we been doing for the past year um, that we've been playing ball? Uh, as far as an on-deck circle. So have we been playing with outside of the rules? I'd have to check. I can't tell you that. Okay. I, I have attended some baseball games, but I have not watched to see where they, uh, where they stood for all those baseball games. Okay. Because, uh, again, I have... 
the way I read the rules is we don't need to have an on-deck circle. We just need to have a spot where the students can stand and wait for their turn back. I would just like to add, I as a board member do not author, would not authorize or approve or vote on any additional expenditure of legal fees in order to go after a contractor when the field has been in use over a year. If this was a problem, the director of athletics or whoever signed off on the field, the way it was designed, should ha have brought it up at that time. The way I understand it, there were dimensions, there were drainage issues, there were all kind of issues in place that um, necessitated the building of that field the way it is. And I can't believe that at this point, 18 months later or whatever, we're just finding out that there's no room to put an on-deck circle. It just does not make sense. And I don't see having to spend legal fees to recoup $4,800. I think that we should first do an internal investigation and find out why we are finding out about this now. Mr. I Vice President. I, you, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I understand Ms. Mongan's point. However, we've had other issues with the engineer of record with this project. So I think that there has been, you know, some negligence on their part and we need to just look into it to see if we have recourse. This is not the only issue that has occurred, there's others. And I know that Ms. Mongan is not aware of those other issues, but that's something which we can dis discuss further. I would like to add though that, I don't remember the date of it, but there was the athletic meeting last year where these items were brought up and they were brought up by an outside person, Mr. Babcock from the Department of Recreation. He gave a punch list of things that in his assessment were wrong with the field. Um, including warning track, the layout of the, the color of the warning track, and the on-deck circle. And that's when it was brought up and brought to our attention. I, I went out there with Mr. Babcock, I went out there with Mr. Erickson, Mr. Uh, Mara, and the, at one time the contractor when we had the other problem with the, the drainage. And these I, things were identified and before the baseball season started, my number one priority, Mr. Mara's number one priority was to ensure the safety of the students, and that's what we did. Okay, so I guess we're going to check. I think Mr. Singh oh, wants to sorry. Say I agree with Mr. Dunn, but um, I think if if it's a safety issue, regardless of the, all the logic that we have, which is valid, um, we we should go this and uh, go ahead and do do this first. Then we can go after whoever we want to go. This should be done. I would uh, ask, as a matter of practicality, uh, Mrs. Morgan made uh, a strong point. We don't want this to be a period victory that we spend more in legal fees uh, than recovery. However, I would be comfortable uh, spending three or four thousand dollars just to, uh, if the message if the message is appropriate for the contractor to deliver that message. But if it's not, I would you know I would, I would put an assessment of it in council's hands and give us an idea what what they think the expense in pursuing this is illegal. Right. course would be and then let the board or the board or administration decide whether we're going to pursue it absolutely um, as mr. Dunn said there are other issues with this particular engineer and we can fold this into the resolution of those so there wouldn't be any um, excess expenditures just to address this issue isolated okay so we're going to vote on it but it will be part of I, for lack of a better term the package of issues with the okay Okay, uh, I believe Nancy, Mrs. Mongan made the motion. Mr. Singh seconded, so roll call. Mr. Mara? Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. Forsilli? Yes. Deprima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes. Motion pass. Motions pass. Okay, non certificated personnel office items one, to th one and two. Can I have a motion? Uh, Mr. Weber? Second. Single second. Any discussion? Okay, roll call, Mr. Mara. Singh. Yes. Sulikowski. Yes. Weber. Yes. Orsilli. Yes. DePrima. Yes. Dunn. Yes. Hopman. Yes. Mongan. Yes. Motions pass. Okay, non certificated personnel operational. Um, one item. Can I have a motion, please? Mongan will move. 
Second. Dunwell second, non certificated personnel operational. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor? Sulikowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. Borsilli? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, non certificated personnel other, items 1 through 13. I have a motion to move, please? Mongan will move. Second? Single second. Any discussion? Congratulations to retiree Barbara Newman. Okay, congratulations, Mrs. Newman. Okay, uh, Mr. Mara? Mr. Newman, why don't you stand up and oh. get that a recognition? <laughs> Weber? Yes. Orsilli? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Solikowski? Yes. Motions pass. Thank you. Okay, certificated personnel, items 1 through 28. Can I have a motion, please? Dunn will make a motion, certificated personnel, items 1 through 28. And a second? So moved. Uh, separating number one for discussion. You separate number one for discussion. Any other separations? Okay, so numbers two through 28, Mr. Mara? Borsilli? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Solikowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. Motions 2 through 28 pass. Mr. Sulikowski, you wanted to discuss number one. Uh, yes, I worked with two of these teachers. Uh, well, one is basically a special ed education teacher. I worked with uh, Claudia Pace and Gail Moskowitz for many, many years. I wish these two people a lot of luck. Not that I don't wish the other two retiring a lot of luck. I wish them also. But these two I know personally. And I'm sure they'll do very well. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to ask the administration to read the names of the four people in years of service. On the uh, agenda for retirement, we have Gail Markowitz, she's Oberg High School Culinary Arts, 18 years of service. Noreen Kurtz, she was employed as a kindergarten teacher at Southwood School for 23 years of service. Svetlana Bogolami, she's at Glenn School and the Grade 9 Center as a child psychologist, 27 years of service, and Claudia Pace, Carl Sandburg Middle School, formerly at the high school, uh, special education, 30 years of service. Congratulations to the retirees and thank you for your service. Any other discussion? Nearly 100 years of uh, service retiring here, 98 years, I believe. <laughs> okay, um, so Mr. Mara, we're voting on number one now. Or silly. Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dunn? Yes, congratulations. Hopman? Yes, and thank you for all your dedication for all the years. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Weber? With congratulations and envy. Motion number one passes. Okay, moving on to non certificated personnel transportation. Item number one. I have a motion, please? Mongan will move. And a second? Single second. Any discussion? Mr. Mara? DePrima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Solikowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. Borsilli? Yes. A motion one passes. Okay, number 25, supplies, equipment, and services, items one through 16. Have a motion, please. Dunn will make a motion. Supplies, equipment, and services, <coughs> items 1 through 16. And second. Anybody? I'll second. Thank you. Separation, please. Okay. 11 and 16. 11 and 16 will be separated. For voting and discussion. Okay, so... Uh, we have Mr. Mara items 1 through 10, 12, 13, 14, and 15.
Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Solikowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. Porcilli? Yes. DePrima? Yes. So motions 1 through 10, 13, 14, and 15. 12, 13, 14, and 15. Pass. Okay, Mrs. Yeah. Mongan, you wanted to discuss? Yes, thank you. On number 11, um, they're not numbered or lettered, but I would vote for all of the cooperatives with the exception of Heinella. Um, for reasons stated at the last meeting, I do not feel that they would be a proper representative as lead agency of our district in that the representative that addressed the board at the meeting could not remember that he had signed the audit that showed the district, the non-operating school district, operated in a deficit. To me, that's a matter of trust, and I don't, I don't want my name associated with approving this joint purchasing system. Um, the other cooperative that I'll just mention, the EIRC, they did receive their purchasing, co cooperative purchasing license from the state of New Jersey in January of 2014. And for that reason, I would not separate them, but I would, um, I, I am not going to be voting on Hinella for those reasons. Number 16, I did question the, when the agenda came home, I did question uh, the um, superintendent and the, and the business administrator on this item. I, my concern is that why wasn't air conditioning for the six classrooms at Southwood School included in the original uh, proposal to provide full day kindergarten? It was stated last September that to accommodate the full day kindergarten that the preschool disabled children would be moved to Southwood School. And I did question the fact that the area is not air conditioned. And I, I was told at that point, at that public meeting, that, well, Glen School isn't air conditioned. It's not needed. But here it is. It is needed. These children do have special needs. And I don't understand why the architect or the administrators didn't recommend that this be included in the initial bid. And I also asked if there were any other costs associated with providing air conditioning for these students. And um, Mr. Mara advised there would be an, an additional $30,000. I don't know if this, the, if this is the last item that will be added or if there are other items down the road. But I just feel that I, I will approve it, but I feel that it should have been included in the original cost and projections for what it would take to put full day kindergarten in to the district. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mongan. Um, I'm going to ask the council how to just have a question of procedure. Oh, uh, on item number 11, um, although I know it's not identified by number or, or letter, can we just remove uh, the Heinella as a separation and vote on it separately? I mean, it shouldn't be any reason why we can't do it that way. I'll refer to counsel for that as I'm sitting in for the president. I don't know. <laughs> so we're taking out Heinella? No, we're, we're going to vote separately on 11 minus Heinella and then Heinella. Okay. Mr. Mauer, you got that? Yep. Okay, so we're voting on number 11. Mr. Vice President? Yes, Mr. Question. At a previous board meeting, we approved Heinella as one of our cooperatives. That's what I thought. That's all I remember. And now we're disapproving them and having them annexed out? I did not approve them for when they were on the last, uh, the last time, and I'm not approving them for 1415. That's what this motion is for. Mr. Mara, can you confirm that? Because I, I remember like Mr. Dunn does, actually. Is, he, is there any way of you confirming if that Yeah, we, we, uh, Heinella was approved, uh, I believe, in February uh, as a shared services okay. uh, participant and also as a joint co-op purchasing group that we would join. And we had lengthy discussions and they were approved. 
And this says renew, so this would be for the, for the next school year? No, typically what these, uh, as, as a matter of routine, we put these on the agenda each year uh, just to renew them. But the shared services agreement that we have with them that's in effect is a 10-year shared services agreement. Uh, the joint purchasing will usually renew each one each year. I don't know, I'm a little confused too then. I, I do recall us approving They're it, approved. but that was very recent, so why Yeah, they were approved, well, they were approved for this year, to use them this year. Okay. Now we're approving them to use them for 1415 yeah, as, as a joint purchase. As of okay. July 1, you As of July renew. 1, okay. yes. I understand. Or not renew them as the board may vote. So do we still separate that part? Yes, so. For Ms. Monk. All right, so. Okay. Do you mind if I? No, please. Yeah. All right, so for number 11, um, the vote, uh, the motion on the floor is for Cooperative Pricing System, Mercer, Middlesex County 61, Middlesex County, Middlesex Regional Education Services Commission, Hunterdon County Education Services Commission, and EIRC. Mr. Mara, please. Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes. Mungin? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. Borsilli? Yes. Deprima? Yes. Motion 11 minus Heinella passes. So yeah. now it's 11, Heinella. including Heine just Heinella. Correct. Okay, Mr. Mara, Heinella. Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes. Mungin? No. Singh? No. Sulikowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. Borsilli? Yes. Deprima? Yes. Uh, motion 11 with, uh, uh, just Heine uh, 11 Heinella passes, I'm sorry. Okay, and number 16. Dunn? Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. Borsilli? Yes. Deprima? Yes. Motion 16 passes. Okay, transportation items one and two. Do I have a motion, please? Mongan will move. Dunn will second transportation. Thank you. Any discussion? <coughs> Mr. Mara? Hopman? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. Orsilli? Yes. Deprima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Uh, motions one and two pass. Okay, uh, miscellaneous items one through seven. Do I have a motion, please? Mongan will move. And second? Single second. I think Annette was first, correct? Any discussion? Mr. Mara? Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Weber? Yes. Borsilli? Yes. Deprima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes. Motions one through seven pass. Um, 19. Board Secretary and Board Business, items 1 through 19. Can I have a motion, please, to move? Weber move. Second. Single second. Discussion. Se separation. Separation. Number 16. Number 16, we separated. Any other separations or discussion? Okay, uh, Mr. Mara, items 1 through 15, 17, 18, and 19. Please. Sing. Numbers one through fifteen. Yes. Oh, okay. Sulikowski. Yes. Weber. Yes. Borsilli. Yes. Deprima. Yes. Dunn. Yes. Hopman. Yes. Mongan. Yes. Motions one through fifteen, seventeen, and eighteen pass. Okay, Mrs. Mongan. I I'm separating that for voting purposes. Okay, so any discussion? I feel that I've, re I've asked for a copy of the contract. I have reviewed it. I have also stated my concern that for the first major project of this firm that the air conditioning was not included in the original plan 
And for that reason, I would not agree with renewing them for the entire year. The motion were amended for a project by project basis, but we are a large district. It is a small firm. The agreement also calls for um, the use of consultants at a 1.2%, I mean, um, a 20% over, overcharge of any of the costs that would be incurred. And because they are a smaller firm, they would have to bring in consultants more often than a larger firm. And to me, that is money that we have saved in prior years that I would not want to uh, indebt the district to next year. Um, Council, do we vote on that or am I yes. put? Oh, OK. OK, Mr. Mara, vote on Sing. the 16. Singh, I'm sorry. Yes. Solikowski? Yes. Weber? No. Worsili? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Hopman? Yes. Mongan? No. Motion 16 passes. Okay, um, hearing of the residents on any school district issue? Anybody? Okay, um, old business colleagues? Nobody? New business? Uh, I have one quick new business. Um, I, I don't know if everybody's aware, but the Old Bridge Town Council has challenged the Old Bridge Board of Education to a charity softball game. Any money we hopefully raise will be um, allocated to the Relay for Life. Relay for Life will be there at the game with a table trying to uh, sign up new teams or whatever they want to do, they're welcome to. The game is tentatively scheduled for June 7th at 10 a.m. at either Lombardi Field Baseball Field or Geick Park, depending upon the availability of our field and depending on how far our baseball team goes, which looks like they're having a fantastic year this year, so they might be uh, using the field and they will take preference over us. But if you have nothing to do that Saturday morning, come out and uh, I guess have a few laughs. Uh, it's all for a good cause, so uh, that's it on that. Anybody else in the business? Okay. Yeah, I, I would just like to say that um, I had the opportunity of going to um, over to see the Beauty and the Beast, and I have to say that it was absolutely phenomenal. The kids were wonderful. Uh, Mr. Maranzoli, I, I thank you for everything that you do oh, over really? there at that school because it certainly showed with all of your teachers who were involved with putting that whole program together. It was just such a wonderful experience to watch them. They were, they were great. And, you know, I, it really, some parts of it took my breath away. That's how good they were. If I didn't know any better, I would have sworn that I was sitting in the middle, middle of Hollywood watching them. They were, they were that good. And, and the teachers that, that helped put that together, um, you know, along with the parents that got those kids to where they are now, Mr. Londigan, you know, I sat with, and it was absolutely phenomenal. And I would just, you know, like you to please thank all of them for me because it really, it really did bring tears to my eyes to see this whole, the whole setup. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Hopman. Um, I guess good of the order, right? Good of the order. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Holcomb, Ms. Kibble, anything? I just have to say that I agree with Ms. Hopman. I was at the play as well, and I had my five-year-old nieces and my two daughters who agreed. They certainly concurred, and they were very impressed that they got to meet um, Beauty uh, after the show. So I, I congratulate them on a job very well done. It takes a lot of, lot of time and effort to put shows together like that, and I thank the teachers, the staff, and the parents for putting that together. Um, I also just want to remind everybody that Old Bridge Online is out, and it's very impressive. Make sure that you take a look at that um, and keep up to date with what's going on in our classrooms in Old Bridge. Thank you. <coughs> I would just like to remind everyone about the um, presentation of the Music and Arts Festival on Thursday evening um, at Oberge High School Gymnasium. There is incredible student talent in this district and it is going to be showcased so beautifully under the direction of uh, Mrs. Keeler 
and um, the Mrs. Nee and Mrs. Thatcher. Um, they've done an incredible job of putting the music portion together, as well as the art department. There will be representation of artwork from all our schools in the district. So please come out and see the incredible talent that has been nurtured by the staff of Old Bridge. Thank you. Mr. Basile? Yeah, I just want to um, echo some of the comments regarding um, the Sandberg play. It was amazing. Um, it's 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 just amazing when you go out and you watch the show and you're kind of looking at the stage and you forget that you're watching middle schoolers because they, they certainly don't look like middle schoolers up there. They're, they're just phenomenal. The play was terrific. Um, I actually took my entire family to it. Uh, it was a great family play and, and, um, and I did see a lot of other administrators with their families there as well and I thought that was, that was quite nice to see you know, the, the families coming together and, and to see the show. Um, so I thought that was, that was great. Um, the Old Bridge High School, uh, play I had seen, I think I had already mentioned this, but that was phenomenal as well. And I know Salk is coming up in a couple of weeks, they're doing hairspray and that, that should be uh, terrific as well. So try to get out there and see that. Um, the Southwood Arts Festival, I, I thank them for the invite. Um, I know they had a terrific arts festival uh, and that was a great time. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, as Ms. Kibler said, I encourage everybody to get out to the Music and Arts Festival. Um, the unfortunate thing is Mr. Cittadino did mention is the same time as the uh, uh, lacrosse game. So I'm going to try to um, see if I can get a little bit to both. Um, uh, so I encourage you to support the lacrosse game as well. Mr. Dunn? Good evening. I would like to just remind the public that our budget process comes to an end next week, which is Tuesday, May 6th. This board will be deciding the 2014-2015 budget, and we need to, you know, let, the, the public needs to let us know how they feel. We need to hear input. Right now, uh, as far as I'm concerned, what I hear, that there's many board members who may not be voting for the 2%. So I'm asking and appealing to the public to let us know what your thoughts are because the public are the ones who have to fund the 2% increase. So it's coming to a culmination, it's coming to a head at this point, and next week is do or die. The administration had to take the necessary steps uh, within the last month or so to put uh, on uh, notice employees that they may not be renewed because of the budget issues here in this district. And I am asking the public to please reach out to your elected officials who have the obligation to make decisions on behalf of the educational system here in Oberge. Let us know what your thoughts are. As individuals, we do have one vote. There are nine votes up here. So I'm appealing, please, let us know where you stand. We want to hear from you because we will be making that decision. And at this point, as far as I know, there are still many board members who haven't made their mind up. So if the budget passes, we move forward. We continue with all the wonderful programs we have. If it fails, there'll be some real deep cuts in, in our system, and that may put us back uh, to two years ago. So I'm just asking everyone, please think about it. Email us uh, uh, at our, our, our email addresses. Let us know what your thoughts are, and hopefully we can make a, a, a good decision come next week. Secondly, the kindergarten students, they were the, they, they were the blast. They were the show tonight. They're the ones who stole everything, and I think that it's wonderful to see Mr. Ticcio and, and everyone who has been participating in the, in, in the kindergarten program, um, that things are going so well, and, and, and it's just splendid. It's just absolutely amazing. And, and, and this Board of Education has given the power and the tools and the resources for uh, a full day program. And if that's any evidence of what the results are gonna be, that's gonna be fantastic for the school district. So with that said, there's a lot of things going on that's great in this district, and we wanna continue that. So please come out next week, Tuesday, May 6th, let us know your feelings, and hopefully we'll make the right decision. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dunn, for reminding everybody about the budget, uh, budget meeting. Ms. Hartman, anything? Nothing? Okay. Uh, Mr. Sulikowski, good to do it. Yes, I would like to acknowledge the accomplishments of all the students in the recognition portion of the program. And again, I would like to echo uh, Mr. Borselli's comments. He's absolutely right. I was at one of the plays. And uh, good luck to all the retirees again. I wish you a lot of luck. Thank you, Mrs. Mongan. I would just like to congratulate um, Mrs. Kibler, Ms. Kibler again for all her efforts regarding the curriculum in the district and the um, full day kindergarten program. Congratulations. 
Mrs. I don't Hill. expect any cookie, but this Kibler's <laughs> kudos to you. Thank you for doing great, great work. Uh, Mr. Weber? Yes, on uh, Saturday, April 6th, I had the pleasure of uh, hearing Cloud9, who uh, gave a wonderful performance at the Oldbridge Public Library to a standing room only kind of, uh, crowd, and we had some out people outside as well. One of the things I find very interesting about the group, being slightly older than the players, is that uh, Mr. Simmons has exposed them to a very broad spectrum of music, which they, I don't think, normally would have been exposed to. And they're amazingly accomplished at it and appreciative of it. So it, it was really, you know, a, a young lady sang an Etta James song. I don't know if you know, but she's fabulous. And this young lady was outstanding. Uh, I just have a question for uh, Mr. Cittadino. It was my understanding, because our meeting is being held after April 30th on May 6th, that a number of those notifications had to go out because of contractual obligations, not that it was purely a, a related issue to the budget passing or not passing. Am I correct in that assumption? Well, it's a little bit of both. We can't um, finalize our staffing until we have a financial plan in place. And the financial plan is not in place until the budget is approved. The budget can't, um, and contractually, in Old Bridge, they have a better contract than statute re regulates. Re statute regulates May 15th to notify non-tenured staff of their employment for the next year. In Old Bridge, uh, it is May 1st. So because the official public hearing is beyond the contractual deadline of May 1st, we have, and we don't have a financial plan in place by that time. So we must, we had to offer um, uh, non-renewal notices for all of our uh, non-tenured staff until we have a firm financial plan in place with the budget approved. But can I ask a question, um, Mr. Cittadino? Um, the budget will be adopted next Tuesday, which I believe is the last day it can be adopted. There were no meetings scheduled since the tentative adoption, so I'm assuming there are no changes because we haven't met to discuss anything. So why are we waiting until the last day? Why wasn't the public hearing scheduled, say, this week, so that those notices didn't have to go out to staff to get everyone so upset? And I know a lot of people, it's very unnerving when you receive that notice letter. Uh, the answer to that is that the, we proposed a date for the meeting uh, and the board reviewed that date and the, rev the board had no problem with that date. So you had the opportunity to object to that date at that point uh, and you did not and we thought it was an acceptable date. It should have been brought out that because the date was the last day that these letters would have to go out. Again, when I met with the staff, I reviewed with them that and said that in the future we would hope to move the date prior to the May 1st deadline. Because in prior years, the budget has always been adopted at the end of March. This is the first year the calendar has changed to accommodate districts that have November board elections. That is correct, Ms. Monia. Thank you. Anybody else? I'd just like to add two quick things. Um, Chris Simone is not here today. You know, he's the, uh, the class president. And being a class president, you're elected by your peers. And I'm not sure how much they knew about him prior to electing him as class president. But he certainly lived up to that um, role as a leader in this, in this school. When the information about the uh, lacrosse game for Stephen Bartlett went out, uh, to get that information out further using social media, uh, Christopher put out a plea to his classmates to retweet his tweet um, about the information, and he pledged 10 cents for every retweet before midnight. That's winding up costing him out of his pocket $213.14 which is truly amazing. He, um, I know he also works uh, as an intern for a, an attorney in Matawan, so I'm not sure if that's where he gets his money from or how he's going to raise that money, but he pledged that, and then several um, members from our Oldbridge High School staff and leadership also matched what he had done. So he's really proud of this community and how it's coming together, rallying for uh, a child and a family in need. So congratulations to um, the entire community and Chris Simone and the Oldbridge High School for selecting such a valuable leader. I did also want to commend um, Captain Robert Weiss. He is our liaison for the school safety program that we have here with our SROs and our special uh, twos that we have in our schools. 
Uh, many people might not know this because Bob Weiss is not the kind of person who talks about himself, is that he were retired from 34 years in active service in the Marines this Saturday. Uh, he invited me as a representative of the Oldbridge School District. I went down to Bowling Air Force Base in Washington, D.C. Um, it was quite a ceremony. I don't think in my lifetime will I ever get a chance to see a ceremony like that. He, uh, representation from the White House came from a President's Medal for him, um, from the CIA, and from his, he also graduated from the FBI Academy in Quantico, Virginia. Uh, he really brings a wealth of information and, and central intelligence to, uh, to Old Bridge. And many people don't know, when there's a national crisis going on in the world, he would go down um, with his unit and be stationed in the Pentagon. This was up until his retirement. He's a Chief Warrant Officer number five. And if you know anything about the Marine Corps, there's, right now there's only 40 out of 240,000 Marines in, in, the, in the United States, there's only 40 ch Chief Warrant Officer number fives. And the joke was, if you have two in a room, it's like seeing a unicorn. And at the retirement, there was two Chief Warrant Officer number fives in the room until he retired. So it was a great ceremony and quite accolades for uh, a national hero and a local hero. So great congratulations to him. Um, Mr. Sidd, you know, I have one question. Could you reprise the uh, dollar amount that uh, Chris is responsible for? Christopher Simone raised $213.14, I believe, but, um, and that's what he raised on his own for 10 cents a pledge. So who owes him six cents? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure of the amount. Maybe uh, someone only made half a tweet. It didn't go through. <laughs> $214.30. Okay, um, congratulations to Captain Weiss, as Mr. Cittadino said. Uh, in closing, it, there's so many good, I've said it so many times before, there's a new excitement in town. So many good things are going on, as echoed by my colleagues tonight, and uh, congratulations to all the award recipient, recognition recipients tonight. Please try and come out Thursday to uh, either the Arts Fair and or the lacrosse game, both going to be wonderful events. and. Uh, <clears throat> We're going to be going into closed session, so by when we come back, it will just be to adjourn the meeting. So thank you all for coming out. And uh, I forgot to say, I hope you enjoyed your summer. Mr. Cittadino will probably be um, tweeting tomorrow. There's no school due to four inches of snow or something. But <laughs> thank you all. I'm sorry. Motion to go into closed session? For purposes of? Then we'll make the motion to go into closed session. OK. It's for attorney-client privilege and contract negotiation. Uh, Rich, did you say it? Yes, I made the motion. And a second.